All right, here is the next video on the kinetic molecular theory. So this is going to be based upon postulate number four, which discusses how the average kinetic energy of the particles is directly related to the temperature, or the temperature is actually directly related to the average kinetic energy. So kinetic energy, average, directly related to temperature. It turns out, my friends, that the average kinetic energy can be equated to the temperature through this equation. 3 halves kT, where k is known as the Boltzmann's constant. Now, I'm not going to give you the value for the Boltzmann's constant because it's not all that important to us right at the moment but it is a number that was developed by a gentleman by the name of Boltzmann, who did a lot of the work in regards to what you're about to see. We also know that the average kinetic energy is equal to 1 half m u squared, the average of that. And so since the average kinetic energy is equal to those two equations, obviously those two equations have to be equal to each other. And so, we're going to set them equal to each other, and we're going to play with them, and we're going to see what we get. Okay. So, one-half m u squared, the average of that, has to be equal to three-halves k t. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the 1 half, and we'll get m u squared average is equal to 3 k t. Then we're going to divide both sides by m, and that's going to give us this. The average of u squared is equal to 3 k t divided by m. And then let's take the square root of both sides. What the heck? So we take the square root of both sides, and when we do that, we get, hold on, we get an equation that looks like this. U R a mess is equal to the square root of 3 K T over M. Yes, my friends. You are a mess. You are a mess. The U R M S is known as the root mean square velocity. Or is the square root of the average of the squared velocity. It's the square root of the average of the squared velocity. So basically, what is that? It's the average velocity. That's what it is. So what it's saying here is that the average velocity is equal to the square root of 3 times k, which is the Boltzmann's constant, times t, divided by m, which is the mass of a particular gas particle. That's a little bit of a problem. You know, it's kind of a pain in the neck because this is basically telling us the average velocity for a particular particle um, in the gas. And I think, it, you know, it, this is based upon like a single individual particle, so that m is the mass of a particle. It'd be better if we could work this out in terms of moles of particles as opposed to single individual particles. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the top and the bottom of this equation on the right-hand side times the Avogadro's number. And when we do, when we multiply the top and the bottom on the right-hand side times the Avogadro's number, we get an equation that looks like this. URMS is equal to the square root of 3 times R, because K times Avogadro's number turns out to be R, the ideal gas law constant, divided by T. And when we multiply the mass of one particle times the number of moles, we get the molar mass. So the URMS is equal to the square root of 3 times R 
times T over the molar mass. Now, the value of R, the ideal gas law constant, is different in this case. It cannot be 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Can't be this. Why? Well, it's that unit of the liter atmosphere. You see, the liter atmosphere is a weird unit. So the moles are okay because they'll cancel out somewhere along the way with the molar mass. And Kelvin is okay, that'll cancel out with the temperature. But liter atmospheres is a weird unit, and it really doesn't lend us to the unit of velocity, which is meters per second. So this has to be converted from R in liter atmospheres to R in joules. R in joules, you say? How do you do that? Well, it turns out, my friends, that a liter atmosphere is actually a unit of energy and that there is a relationship between the liter atmosphere and the joule. It turns out that there's 101.3 liter atmospheres for every joule, so if we multiply this by 101.3, R then becomes up to be 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. And so the value of R is now 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. And be careful now, because your molar mass isn't going to be useful if it's in grams. It has to be in kilograms per mole, because a joule is a kilogram. Actually, a joule is a newton times a meter, and we know newtons are in kilograms, and so that's why your molar mass has to be in kilograms. So make sure your temperature is in Kelvin, and make sure your molar mass is in kilograms and you'll be all set with the root mean squared velocity equation. So we're going to take this a little bit further, and we're going to talk about two characteristics of gases, and then we're going to apply this equation to those two characteristics of, gla of gases. Excuse me. So let's get rid of this mess. All right. We're going to talk about diffusion and effusion. So first we'll start with diffusion. Diffusion basically, my friends, is the characteristic or the property for which gases basically move from one side of the room to another, or it's a description of how they do it. I mean, you know, if you sprayed some perfume on one side of the room, you know that it would travel from one side of the room to the other side of the room. If we did sprayed perfume in the front of the room, the people in the front of the room would smell it first and the people in the back of the room would smell it last. And we see that it doesn't happen instantaneously. We don't get the smell throughout the entire room instantaneously. The smell takes time to get from point A to point B. So it takes time for the molecules of the perfume to travel from one place to another. Why is that? Well, the little particles, right, the little particles, there they are, there's a little gas particle, will start moving but then it, it bounces into air molecules, which causes it to bounce this way, which causes it to bounce this way, which hits another gas particle and bounces this way, and another gas particle, and another gas particle, and another gas particle, and it will continue to hit gas particles along the way, and it'll finally point up and up here at your nose. It's an ugly-looking nose, but there's the gas particle going up your nose, and you smell it, okay? So, diffusion basically is the motion of the gas particles due to the fact that they move along in a rapid random motion. And as they collide with other objects, like other gas molecules in the, in the room, like air, they're going to follow a path which will not lead them directly from point A to point B very quickly. And therefore, as it takes time, that's why it takes time for a, an odor, let's say, to travel from one side of the room to the other. So that's the idea of diffusion. And then there's the idea of effusion. The best way to describe effusion is like having a helium balloon. You know that you have a helium balloon when you were a kid, and you might even have a helium balloon now filled up with helium. You know that it goes flat after a while. Very disappointing, very, very disappointing when your helium bloom goes flat. That's because 
we don't see them, but the helium balloon's got lots of little holes in it. And it's by the nature of how the polymer molecules are arranged in the walls of the balloon. There are holes in the balloon, so there are holes, there are lots of little holes for which the gas particles can escape through as such. And so when gas particles escape from one side of the container to the other side of the container, or they escape from one container to the outside through a little hole, this is what we call a fusion. Now, a fusion is kind of interesting, and it's very, uh, you know, useful, because if we have two different gases, let's say, I say if we have two different gases, see, this gas particle is different than that gas particle because this one's all, like, colored in, and this one's all, like, not. Well, they can both fuse through the same hole, and the rate at which they fuse through the hole is significant because we can use it to actually find the molar mass of the gas. And I'm going to explain to you how. Now, I'm going to try to keep this video short, so I'm not going to show you how this equation is developed. It does come from this equation we showed you before, the URMS equation, which is equal to the square root of 3RT divided by the molar mass, of course, in kilograms. If we replace the idea of a rate of movement, the rate, right? A velocity is a rate. So if we re replace the idea of the URMS with R for rate, so we'll let URMS now become equal to R for rate, because remember, a speed is a rate, or a velocity is a rate. If we take this equation and do some fancy stuff with it, this equation here, the URMS equation, we come up with an equation that looks like this. R1 over R2 is equal to the square root of M2 over M1, where M2 and M1 are the molar masses. So basically what it's saying is this. This equation says that if you know the ratio of the rate of either effusion or diffusion of one gas, over the other gas, right? It can be for either effusion or diffusion. If we know the ratio of the rates, the ratio of the rates is equal to the square root of the molar masses of the two gases, where the molar masses are inverted now. So we've got R1 over R2, and we've got M2 over M1. So the ratio of the rates, in other words, the ratio of the URMSs, the ratio of the rates of movement, the ratio of the rates of the two gases is equal to the square root of the molar mass of gas 2 over the molar mass of gas 1. So if we know this ratio and we know the molar mass of gas 1, we can find the molar mass of gas 2, or vice versa. Okay, my friends, I'm going to cut this short right here because we're running on 13 minutes. Um, please do ask questions from either myself or Mr. Walsh about this tomorrow if you don't quite get it from this video. Also, you can look in your textbook. There's some examples in there. And if you have any questions, make sure you ask us. So have a good evening, and see you tomorrow. Bye.